to raise a can do canines puppy takes so much work and so much effort and it's not just by one person. It's by just a huge number of volunteers mostly that raise them and train them and it's the foster homes and inmates at the prison that put time into them as well as the staff at Can Do Canines and the trainers there. It's this huge number of people that you can't even count. It really does, you know, take an army to raise a Can Do Canine. High five. Yes, good girl. I mean, there's so many different volunteers and it's not just, not just people working with the dogs either. There are people that are helping to make phone calls or organize different uh, fundraisers. There's people that come and help with graduation and the tours, and it's all volunteers. So as a puppy raiser for Can Do Canines, we are asked to come to class. They have classes at their facility quite regularly, so we're asked to come to class a minimum of two times a month. One of the first things they teach us is that if you don't have your puppy's attention, you can't teach them anything. So the, one of the first things we work on is something called Watch Me. You know, we're not going to chase squirrels, we're not going to chase cars, we're gonna let the birds sing and go by, letting kids pass without getting all excited, letting other dogs pass without having to say hello. So really just, learning to be calm in all situations. Puppy raisers are the heart and soul of candy canines. They're the ones that take a puppy in at eight weeks of old and it's this little baby thing here, this tiny little ball of fur, and they potty train it and crate train it and listen to the little cries at night and let them out at three in the morning and train them, socialize them, get them you know, behaving in the house and learning the house rules making sure they're not counter surfing and not getting on the bed, taking them to vet appointments, um, x-rays and eye appointments, all sorts of time and money put into this dog, just again, to bring it into Can Do Canines and then trust the trainers to finish up that training and match it with the perfect client. Are you ready to come home? Huh? Are you ready yeah. to see the kids? You know, even though it gets tiring and, and hard sometimes, it's definitely the, the good parts outweigh the bad. I mean, he's really cute, very smart, very lovable, and he's a good companion. And, uh, and I know that he's being trained to do something important. So as puppy raisers, Can Do Canines wants us to socialize these puppies. So to take them out in public as much as we can. They do lots of public outings. A group of puppy raisers meet at a mall or Home Depot. Really, we try to take her as many places as we possibly can. And that socialization is really important so that she's comfortable and confident no matter where she goes. One of the coolest parts is, you know, of training the classes is having a puppy raiser come in and come to class and be like, guess what? She's doing this now, let me show you. And they get so excited about it because all of a sudden they had this breakthrough. This puppy that was going through a little teenager phase is all of a sudden, it clicked, I get it, now I'm gonna tug open the refrigerator for you. When a dog, when something finally clicks, you know, yes, we have a party for them. We're like, yeah, you did it! Yes, good girl, thank you. The first time I had a puppy pick a credit card up off the floor, I screamed up and up and down and jumped up and down and I actually woke my daughter up who was sleeping. <laughs> she comes downstairs and she's like, mom, what's going on? I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry I woke you, but Georgia just picks up a credit card. You know, I kind of assumed that he might be a a mobility dog, um, but the staff at Can Do Canines explained that they don't make that decision until um, right when they're getting towards the end of their training, and they make the decision by seeing what the dog is good at and seeing what the dog likes to do, which I think is really nice. So he could end up being a diabetes assist dog or a seizure assist dog or a hearing assist or an autism assist dog or a mobility dog. 
we know that at some point we are going to be asked to turn Sunny back in for final training and for placement with a client. And we talk about that in our family and I talk about that with my girls all the time. She is not ours to keep. She is ours to love like we get to keep her, but she is not meant for us. She is meant for someone else. She is meant for, for a higher calling. Turning my dog in gets me really choked up. <laughs> but also seeing my dog graduate and hearing or getting an email or a phone call that said, hey, guess what? Lloyd's got a client. He's going to be an autism dog. Then when it's time to let her go, we, we're going to cry over it, but we know that she's going to do something amazing for someone someday. And that will make all the time and effort and love that we put into her, that will make it worth it for us. When we see her graduate and we get to meet her forever person, that will make it worth it. Where's mom? Where's mom? Where's she? Oh my goodness, hi. Well, hi there. There she is. It's just such a blessing to be able to be part of it and see, truly see these dogs grow from little itty bitty puppies to have no idea what a sit means to get to match with that client and now that client is able to get about their daily lives and you know, go out more and get to you know, enjoy the little things in life that we take for granted. And getting to be here and see that every day, it's just, it's an honor to be able to be part of it and really, you know, see those dogs change lives.